from the Seafloor the Best. Okay, so you can see him coming in. Oh, wow. Hey, everybody. Um, hey, Elizabeth and Earth, Sea, Sky. Hey, tell us in the chat box where you're coming from so we can see where you're... <laughs> hey, that's Mrs. B Kids. This is the problem with Periscope is it's so tiny you can't see who it is. There's uh -huh. Elizabeth. She's an author. Hey, Elizabeth. Um, goodness. If we Happy turn it this way, girl. do we get a we better view of ourselves? No. Because I haven't upgraded to the new Periscope, and if the people who are watching haven't upgraded to it either, then it will be sideways. Oh, okay. So, unfortunately. So, they but get yeah, to they see half our face, in. basically. Yeah, unless we sit closer. Let's see. Jess, we, hey. <laughs> we can't get yeah, it looks like they're there. Are you all there? There we go. There's some hearts. They tap on the screen to give us hearts. Oh, They like I what see. we're saying. They like, but we haven't said anything worth we liking yet. But no. They but just like us. They just like us. For being here. Okay. <laughs> Cincinnati, okay. Good. Awesome. Yes. Gretchen. Hey. Okay. Oh, good. You're inviting people. Yeah. Invite your friends. This will be fun. So if you have a question, thanks, Pam. Thanks for the, uh, inviting your followers. We just like y'all. That's it. And it says <laughs> Alaska. We, we've got our Alaska rep here. Couple, couple of them from Alaska. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> Persuin percentage wise, they've. Okay. So this is somebody that needs to be blocked. That happens too. <laughs> Does it? They're, they're, they're trolling. <laughs> yes. Okay, so in the chat, if you've got a question for Andrew, pop it in there because we only have a short amount of time before I'm going to have to give him back to all the reps who came here to see him. <laughs> I kind of stole him away from the crowd. Oh, uh, from Rio. Very cool. Is that Rio de Janeiro? Is that Rio de Janeiro? Is that where you're coming from? Uh, yep. I noticed. Okay. <laughs> and a children's museum. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so we're, um, we've been chatting a lot. Andrew gave an amazing talk last night, and I told you last night, if you were here on Periscope, I told you about how we talked, he managed to tie the Battle of Hastings into what we're doing in our little homeschools with our children, and how those small, insignificant things that we don't think are adding up actually add up to this amazing, beautiful, um, oh good, book recommendations in, in the library. Okay. Well. I don't know if you have in the library, but I'm just rereading for the manyth time. Is that a word, manyth? Manyth. Um, the Book of the Dun Cow by Walter Wengren. I have to say it's just one of the greatest stories, books that I've ever... How did I switch from teaching violin to writing? You want to know the absolute truth? It's really hard to support a family teaching violin. So I was looking for something else to do, and I got this idea of teach writing seminars, and it really took off. You know Walter Wengren. That's wonderful. Jenna looks like she knows. Dun cow. That's right. D-U-N. It's a color. Brown cow. It's the book of the dun cow. I'm doing it with my book club in our little co-op uh, in uh, Oklahoma. And uh, it's uh, it's not just beautiful. It's, it's I don't know, epic. Epic. It's like, oh, Lord of the Rings with Sauron meets the Canterbury Tales with Chanticleer the Rooster. Okay, so she says, so much talk about various views on writing, complete freedom versus structure. Can you talk about that? Yeah, you could make a metaphor on that into your daily life. On? Um, complete freedom versus structure. Oh, yes, that's true. How would you accomplish more? But the best, the best metaphor there is the music one. And I was a music teacher, as you just mentioned. And that is, if you understand models and techniques and you practice these things, then down the line, you have a whole lot more freedom to express whatever you want to in an organized and stylish way. Whereas if you just kind of sit down and write whatever comes into your brain next, it's rambling, redundant, there's no real learning happening. So the comparison would be a music student would learn scales, etudes, memorize pieces, a memorized repertoire, play this in exactly this way to learn these skills, and then years later, they would be able to uh, apply that ability toward the creative elements, such as interpretation or improvisation or composition. So anytime you want a foundation of basic skills, you want something to model, something better than what you can do by yourself. And exactly what she's saying there, or he or she, Ed, Edna Snapshot. Well, that's Pam. You mm -hmm. can't compose before you can play. You could try, uh, but it won't be too much better than what would be random. Right. Somebody just said their daughter said, hey, that sounds like the guy who reads our poems. <laughs> yes, that, that would be with Ooey Gooey Ooey was gooey. a worm, a mighty worm was he. Um, do I have any encouraging words for teaching language arts to kids with autism language delays? We have very good results with both poetry memorization 
as well as the Structure and Style Writing Program uh, oh, for kids. No, get your face. It's prettier. I know. I was trying to make it so that you... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you look better. You make me look better. You get in the picture there. Um, <laughs> the, uh, I can't compose before you can play. Well, you can do things simultaneously, but the quality, I suppose, of composition. But uh, in terms of the kids who have uh, autism spectrum disorder types of learning disabilities, memorization is very powerful because it will build the language database in a way that is is hard to get from the kind of busyness and random randomness of day-to-day -day life and then in terms of, of if this child is able to be writing on paper at all the very tight modeling the very uh, careful development of skills in a step-by-step -step, uh, smaller step way that's one area where we've had tremendous success they like what you're saying. That's what all those hearts oh, are. Oh, good. Um, <clears throat> is there a difference between pink hearts and green hearts? They're just hearts? different people. Oh, different people. Yep. Okay. Can I start there. IEW with a sixth grader? You could start IEW with pretty much anyone who can read somewhat independently and copy words. And, of course, we get, you know, parents and teachers and college students who come to our seminar and say, how come I never learned this? Mm -hmm. My life would have been so much yeah. easier. I would recommend, by the way, if you haven't gotten their Magalog, if you grab the IEW Magalog, there is a... Uh, a chart in there that tells you where to start if you're brand new to IEW with each different grade. So if you've got a first grader or you've got a sixth grader or you've got a ninth grader and they're brand new to IEW, they'll tell you right where the best place is to start. So grab that Magalog. It's free at IEW.com. There, there was two really good questions just passed by. Okay. Um, one was about Unit 4 and one was about motivation. Um, unit 4, it's specific to people who understand our system, but summarizing in general is something that most kids don't really like. They don't like the word. They don't know what to do. They don't really know what it means. And so um, when I teach that skill, I say the reason it's confusing is it's spelled wrongly. You know, people think summarizing, S-U-M-M-A-R-I-Z-I-N-G. Mm -hmm. Sum in math talk would be the whole, everything. Mm -hmm. So they inadvertently think, okay, what you want me to do is tell all that in this much space. Mm -hmm. Nobody can do that. Mm -hmm. You can never tell all that in this much space. You can only tell some of it. Mm -hmm. So correctly spelled, summarizing would be spelled like this. S-O-M-E hyphen A hyphen R-I-Z-E right. uh -huh. because you're not choosing all, you're choosing some and then the question is which some of it to choose and that's what we try to coach. So um, yes, you've got it, uh, some are rising. So uh, tell your kids who are struggling with Unit 4 that you know they don't have to choose at all, they should choose what they think is interesting and important and relevant and then don't judge them on their choices, let them you know, write what they what they think is interesting from that source material. The other question about motivation is one I come up with very uh, frequently. And the basic laws of motivation, if you haven't heard my talk, uh, you've heard it, even though you've got mostly girls, but oh, teaching boys and yes. other kids would rather be making forts all day. Yes. Um, I talk about the three laws of motivation. The first law is that children uh, like to do what they can do. If, if they can do something and they're decently good at it, they generally like doing that. Uh, that's true for all of us. If, if you're good at talking, you like talking. If you're good at cooking, you like cooking. If you're good at chess, you like chess. Um, the second law is that some children, uh, or is that children want to do what they think they can do. And so if, if they believe they could do something and be successful, they will want to try it. And if they are successful, a few times of repetition, that will move it from the want to into the like to. The problem comes with the third law of motivation, which is children don't like to do. They will hate and, and even refuse to do that which they believe they cannot do. So when children build up a momentum of what they perceive as failure, even if you don't perceive it as failure, they start to hate that thing. So the trick in anything, whether it's math or writing or playing a musical instrument or a sport, is to back up to where you can do what is simple enough to be successful. And so... Uh, that would be the trick. I am currently teaching all things fun and fascinating in the co-op. Well, why are you on Periscope while you should be teaching your students? That's, <laughs> that's my question. I'm in Orlando when I should be teaching my students. Yeah, so it seems they also hate to do what they're told to do. Yes and no. You know, there there is definitely that that instinctive thing of, you know, I'm not making my own choice. I'm not free to do this. Um, but, you know, you set some parameters, and, and the truth is you're always free to do it. It's just the consequences of not doing it may be worse than the consequences of suffering the doing of it. Mm -hmm. And so we're always kind of balancing that game. But I would say that the, the real trick is to back up to where something is easy enough where kids can be successful, and then they will want to move move forward with it. 
Very good. Okay, I have to give Andrew back to this room full of people who have come all the way to Orlando to t chat with him. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, I did want to let you know, we are about to record a podcast for the new IEW podcast. It's called The Arts of Language. If you haven't gotten it, haven't listened to it yet, head to iTunes, look up Arts of Language or just search IEW. Subscribe to it, give it a rating. Those ratings on iTunes are huge. What happens is iTunes will show that podcast to more parents who are looking for good podcasts when they head to iTunes, the more ratings and follows a podcast has. So make sure you go follow it and give them a rating review. It's wonderful. Yes, we're, will you be in Cincinnati? Not personally this year. Oh, you won't? No, I had a conflict, uh, a, a commitment I made three years ago to Nebraska. So okay. got to keep, keep commitments, but you'll be there. I will be there. And our IEW reps will be there. Yes, so. very good. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, guys. We really appreciate it. Yeah, this is fun. Okay, see you later. Adios.